Our button, and if you can hit the light. All right, this is um, really all the stuff I'm going to be showing you in graphs and cartoons and maps and stuff, which I prefer. I don't like. Do you guys like taking notes on PowerPoint? No. no. I think it's the worst. That's the worst. I hate it. And the funny part about it is um, our faculty, our administration always complains that we give, you know, teachers give notes and just, you know, boring PowerPoints and stuff, and people, kids hate doing it. I guess how they teach us when they talk about how not to teach. PowerPoints. PowerPoints, and they just sit there. Have you ever had a teacher who has a PowerPoint just reads off the PowerPoint? Oh, yes. Isn't that the worst? Right? I mean, I'm like, dude, I can read. Help brother out here. Um, okay, here is what's going on right here. A placard. I just wanted to see if you're going to say placard. All right, so here's our placard. Um, again, it's not like, I mean, these are a huge amounts of space. It's not like we have a ship every 20 feet in the ocean, right? If you are, uh, you have limited resources, right? You've taken economics, some of you. If you have limited resources, where do you put most of your ships? Where they are. Do what? Ports. Yeah, where they are. <laughs> um, outside of major ports, right? Then maybe that's where they are. <laughs> I'm going to grant you a lever. What we're going to do is go where they are when they don't know it and take care of them. <laughs> Pretty specific. <laughs> right. Um, okay, you can see the north trying to, uh, how the Mississippi River is becoming so important because you can cut off Louisiana, Texas, and Arkansas, which is a large, uh, pretty big population. Where is most of this war, uh, this war fought? North or south? South. Well, the south. So the Civil War, like in terms of Civil War history, the south talks about it way more than north does. We talk about it in Kentucky a lot because we were a border state. Lots of stuff happened here, and people in Kentucky fought in the north and in the south. But I can tell you in Michigan, they just don't talk about that much. Right? All the South wants to talk about is a civil war. Um, I've never seen one group like to talk so much about something they fail so miserably at. All right. Here is um, an old map um, showing the Anaconda plan. I just like it because it's a big giant snake and it scares me. <laughs> in every, um, I like the little things in every state. Like, I don't know, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Oh, it's like Davy Crockett, or like Daniel Boone. It's Daniel Boone, look at that. I'm assuming this is Tennessee, and this is like people who are white trash and bad sports. <laughs> All right, so here are some of the generals. Again, you have to memorize these generals. They're just so you can sort of see faces. This is Winfield Scott. This is the guy that ran for uh, president in the 1850s. He came up with the Anaconda Plan. He was the general of the Union Army for about 25 minutes, and then he retired, all right? But, uh, old fuss and feathers. Um, McClellan is the guy we're, we talked about the most. He is young. He's actually younger than I am at this point. Um, he, yeah, that was his problem. The reason he lost? Didn't put his hand in his pocket. Um, what did Lincoln not like about this guy? Do you remember? He was timid. Yeah, he's really cautious. And so what's going to happen is... You've seen, I mean, if you're cautious, you've seen all the statistics about the advantages the North had. What assessment can you make because of his caution? He didn't really want to fight. Well, yeah, but what assessment about the war? He makes it last longer. Yeah, this is Lincoln's problem. He said this war should have been over earlier. His inability to close the deal and go after Lee hurt the war, and in fact, Lincoln probably would argue cost hundreds of thousands of lives. Um, this is my favorite, just because his hair is awesome. That's the worst haircut ever. You're the worst haircut ever. Um, if for every reason I ever go bald, and I hope I don't, but if I do, this is the way I'm going. Right? This is what's happening. Um, you know, all oh, you just cut their hair short, just sort of keep it like, like Alice does, right? Maybe you can pull that off. Everybody can pull this off, right? <laughs> Kelly would love this. Look at his head. Bro. Like, you know what? Look at his tallest head. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, if you've got this going on, no one's looking at your forehead. They're all staring at these things, right? Coming and connecting and going around. It's like a it's like a weird double parabola going on. Hey, his last name is Cypher. Right. I had to change my name. 
Now, what I'm going to talk about, Lincoln would fire, fire McClellan and then had Burnside, um, and then, um, again, yeah, there's Hooker, which is also an awesome name. Um, and then he hired McClellan again, and then Meade, uh, you've heard of the Battle of Gettysburg, obviously. Meade is going to be the general that oversees the Battle of Gettysburg. And again, while it's a great victory for the North, Lincoln had the same issue with Meade, that, Le that Lee started to retreat. And so what did the North do? They stood and cheered because they won. What would Lincoln want to happen? Go after him. Go after him and you finish him off. You get done with it. Because the longer this war goes, think about, what is this war doing to America? Literally. It's tearing it apart, right? And the longer it's going and becoming torn apart, the harder it's going to be to put it back together. Does that make sense? Lincoln wanted the North to come in, spank the South like it was its dad, and then, you know, bring it back in the Union. But instead what happened was, the South took longer and longer and longer and longer to beat, and then you've got, you know... 800,000 casualties instead of having 200,000 casualties. I mean, that's a huge difference. Um, McClellan again, and finally, U.S. Grant. Um, U.S. Grant is one of the most interesting generals we've ever had, possibly one of the worst presidents we've ever had, um, although absurdly popular. Like, he was absurdly popular as a president, but bad. Um, but he'll finally, finally, uh, Lincoln gets him and rides him like a, like a horse to the, the wind. Um, McClellan, this is one thing that's funny. Lincoln used to actually go out to the field to meet with McClellan. If you've seen Lincoln the movie, it begins with him out in the field, right, talking to the men. Traditionally, if the, a president's going to meet with a general, where do they meet? At the White House. They meet at the White House. Um, so McClellan is claiming, put your trust in me, I got this. And this is going to be one of the problems. By the way, if you're curious, we're going to about today. Lincoln's going to run in 1864 for president. You know who he runs against? McClellan. McClellan. <laughs> Didn't you say Roosevelt like used to go meet the generals out too? Like he didn't meet him at the White House either? Who? Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt. Well, Teddy Roosevelt... Like, didn't he go, like, run with them? Teddy Roosevelt was a really weird dude. Um, we never had a war going on in America while he was president. Yeah, in fact, we never had a war while he was president. Yeah. Um, but, like, I thought he, that was a big reason why, like, our military, the... The standard for like shape that they had to be in wasn't a really big deal at the time, and then he went out and ran with like the general. That may have been it. He was really into physical fitness, and we'll get to Roosevelt. He is by far the weirdest dude we've ever had as president. But he's awesome. Um, he's pretty interesting. The crap that he did was just so stupid slash awesome that it's pretty funny. Um, Doris Carter's good one, the chick that wrote um, Team of Rivals that. And she's one of a couple of Pulitzer Prizes. She's amazing. See what I said that writes histories and reads like novels? She actually just came out with a book about Roosevelt and Taft. Um, I'll give you one thing about Roosevelt to tell you how weird he is. He wanted to strengthen his wrists. He didn't think his wrists were strong enough. So have you seen guys like have those things, like those things where they squeeze, like the heavy balls, like the little things they squeeze to make their forearms and their wrists stronger? Here's what Roosevelt did. Roosevelt had somebody tie a big giant wire. You guys have been to DC before? Mm -hmm. You know the Potomac goes through DC? He had someone tie a big wire over the Potomac and he hung over the river <laughs> to strengthen his wrists. He was the first Chuck Norris. Um, he, uh, John Hay was his Secretary of State and John Hay was walking across the Potomac Bridge one day and looked over and he's like, there is an imbecile who's hanging by a wire. Who would do that? He was like, <laughs> Oh, it's Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, Roosevelt used to hire people, or not hire, but would ask like famous people to come over, or would hire, or like, I'm sorry, would invite like Roman, Greek Roman wrestlers, and he would wrestle them at the White House. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is uh, uh, this is Stonewall Jackson. He's actually going to die during the war, but um, he's considered one of America's, the South, but in today America's great generals. Um, 
George Pickett is famous. He's the one that got beat real bad. Uh, Pickett's charge at Gettysburg is famous for basically being a giant slaughter. Um, he led a charge up what's now called Pickett's Hill, uh, where thousands of Confederates were mowed down in a few minutes, um, leading to the Battle of Gettysburg being lost to the South. Um, Longstreet, um, why don't we know this guy? Boys, go. And he started. There it is. All right. Kevin knows everything. Kevin is our pop culture guy. Um, and then obviously Robert E. Lee. Um, the thing about Lee that was so good is he was always under man, and his troops loved him. Right. The funny part about him, I can't also think. Have you guys ever been to All International Cemetery? No. If, you, if you've heard of Arlington National Cemetery, that's actually his, that was his yard. Um, did you guys know that? Um, his plantation, if you're at um, Arlington, you'll see a big giant house up on a hill. That was his plantation house. Um, Arlington National Cemetery was his plantation. He originally was asked by, before Virginia became a Confederate state, he was asked by Lincoln to lead the Union Army. He was considering it. Once Virginia became part of the Confederacy, he left. Literally, his house across the street from Washington, D.C. Um, he, in fact, wasn't particularly fond of slavery. So I don't know if that makes him bold because he went with a state and he fought for something, or if it makes him essentially a, yeah, a, a bad person. I don't know. Um, I've also argued to piss people in Anderson County off. Like, there are colleges in him. Lee is a big name in Virginia. Like, Richard Henry Lee is a, a famous, like, um, um, early, like, founding father. I've always thought that people like Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee, I mean, think about this. Didn't they break away from the Union and fight a war, killing hundreds of thousands of people? What did we do to them? Kill them. We didn't, though. Right. They're Isn't it weird? Why isn't he a traitor? Why didn't we line him all these generals up and just shoot them in the head and put them in a grave and piss on it? Well, I mean, think about this. Think about this. We had people tear apart our country, lead a revolution against our country. Hundreds of thousands of Americans died brutally. And we were nice enough to not kill these guys. And they still hate the North. Don't you think?